Hey, Maya. Hi, it's me. It's Noah. Thank God you're awake. Oh, my God. You had me so scared. Look, how do you feel? Are you all right? Is there pain in any specific spots? Do you, no. Can you... Easy. Don't overwhelm her. Okay, I, I'm sorry. I'm just so glad she's conscious. <sighs> what happened? That's what I want to know. Look, you were beaten up, Maya. Did you, did you see your attackers? Yes. I remember now. Oh, sorry, I'm bringing so much trouble. Hey, come on, don't be crazy, all right? Look, I want to know who the creeps were who did this to you, all right? Noah, I think that's enough, okay? She's, she's weak, she needs to rest. Look, I'm, I'm just trying to find out who... I know, I know, but she's been through a lot already today. Such a vicious attack. Who would do this to her? I don't know, but I'm gonna find out. Maybe now you'll tell me your whole history with her. It's obvious your relationship was pretty intense. Let's talk outside in the hallway. Okay. I'm all ears. What's the whole story between you and Maya, Noah? I thought Paloma was working tonight. I know. Excuse me. Um, I'm Paloma's mother. Where is she? Oh, she's downstairs in the stock room getting some stuff. She should be back up by any time now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I was hoping we would find something juicy in here. These are just accounting files. What do you have? Mm, just some ancient tax returns. I mean, for a minute there, I really thought we hit the jackpot. Imagine if we'd found the place where Alistair stashed all his dirty little secrets. There's still a lot of boxes we haven't gone through. But it would help if we knew what we were looking for. With any luck, we'll know it if we find it. Two cappuccinos, please. Love, even better the second time around. It will be if Catherine Crane stays out of our lives. Come on, Catherine, come on, don't be shy. There's no reason to be afraid of him now. Rationally, I know you're right, but emotionally, there's a part of me thinks that he can just leap out of that bed and grab me by the throat. He can't. He can't do anything. He's just a pathetic, impotent man now. He's no threat to anyone anymore, including us. Such an insane man. He made both our lives a living hell. I hope he suffers as much as he made us suffer. I think that can be arranged. No, I, I, I just wish I could see the looks on all of your faces. <laughs> and it's true. My uh, beguiling young wife is as duplicitous as they come, but then I respect a quality like that in a successor. And no, she has never promised me any wifely loyalty. Well, she never said in the first place she would ever do that. You see, Teresa's the type of person who uh, sets her mind to a goal and never wavers, no matter how many odds are against her. She's not like you, Julian, who goes around hugging trees all of the time instead of coming up with a profit for Crane. You see, Teresa's very much like me. Nerves of steel, despite being a woman. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I hate to tell you this, but right now, you're all going to be under the thumb of my self-serving wife. What she says goes. This is going to be the gospel. The gospel according to the very unsaintly Teresa. And if by chance you're all watching this uh, DVD and I'm no longer among the living, I just...
just wish that they really, they really do have monitors down in hell. Because I don't want to miss one single solitary minute of all the heartache that Teresa is going to visit on each and every one of them. <laughs> I presume this is clear. Alistair Crane's recorded codicil to his last will and testament supersedes any and all instructions made earlier. Now, wait a minute. It would be clear if Alistair were of sound mind when he made this. I don't believe he was. Neither do I. Sounds like the rantings of a madman. I must say, we're going to fight this in court. I can save you all the trouble. The legality of what you've just seen is uncontestable. You don't have a legal leg to stand on, Mr. Winthrop. You answer to Alistair's wife, Teresa, now. Did you hear that? What I say goes. What'd you do? Did you hold a gun to Alistair's head, force him to change his will? No. No, I was as surprised as you were when he named little Ethan his heir. And his latest act of generosity, that is simply mind-boggling. Oh, you are such a liar. You know, Gwen, if I were you, I I wouldn't call Ethan's new employer such nasty names. You'd be nice to me. I'll be much more generous to Ethan than Alistair was. <laughs> Go to hell, Teresa. This is outrageous. Julian, don't worry, okay? I've learned a lot from you, too. You know, I may have the makings of a dictator, but I'll be a benevolent one. For starters, I think we all should head home and have a nice long chat about the future, and I'll have the cook prepare a snack for us. Right, like we're really gonna go home with you. Cool it. You don't want to get off on the wrong foot now, oh, do you? Oh, honey, we are a little late for that by about six years. I know you're upset that things haven't worked out quite the way you expected them to. But it's OK. It's not the end of the world. Joel, you're free to go. We're not flying anywhere tonight. Uh, Joel, no, do not leave this plane, because Ethan and I are going to India as planned. She is absolutely right. Teresa, you don't think, honestly, that you can bully Gwen and me into staying in harmony, do you? As a matter of fact, I do. But I would like to call it gentle persuasion. <sighs> call it what you want. You can forget it. I'm taking Jane, and we're leaving tonight. Thank you. As a matter of fact, you can warm the engines right up, because I want to be in New Delhi by the morning. Ethan, it's not going to happen. Joel, you take orders from me now, and we aren't going anywhere. Teresa, you know what? We'll just take a commercial flight. It's that easy. We're leaving. Not with my daughter, you're not. For the last time, Teresa, we have custody of Jane, and there's not a damn thing you can do about it. Well, we'll just see about that. Now, won't we, Gwen? These are all financial papers, but they look like they're legit. Maybe there's nothing to find. Maybe, but... If Alistair isn't hiding anything, then why is he stowing all the stuff down here? Maybe because he's a pack rat and he hates throwing things out? He owns whole storage warehouses. No, no, this is a hiding place. The question is, what is he hiding? After what he's done to my family and friends, I would give anything to find out. Let's keep looking. Honey, where do you want to sit? Oh. Whoa, hold on. Uh, what's, what's that? It's... Oh, I see. <laughs> I... I don't want you to think that I'm acting like some 20-year-old bride. No. Why would I think that? Are you really happy that we are renewing our vows? Well, why wouldn't I be? I don't know. I just don't want to pressure you into anything. No, you're not. I'm with you all the way on this. Oh, good. Because you don't know how good it makes me feel to hear you say that. I don't want to come off as some jealous girlfriend. I feel awful about what happened to Maya. Yeah, I know. I'd feel a whole lot better if you tell me more about your relationship. It's obvious she meant a great deal to you. I'm not saying that she didn't. But what happened tonight with those creeps who attacked her, and earlier when you freaked out at what you thought were gunshots, is this all connected somehow to your past with Maya? Look, all, all I know is that Maya is deathly afraid of something or someone. 
How do you know that? I'm gonna have to start at the beginning. Uh, okay, so finding Maya on the dock. Yeah, look, it wasn't the first time I saw her tonight. I ran into her earlier this evening. Why didn't you tell me? I was just so shocked when I saw her at the Blue Note. I... So that's who you were really talking to when I came outside? I'm sorry, Fancy. All right, I was just so shaken. I hadn't seen her in so long, and she was so desperate. And she asked me for my help. With what? I, I don't know. You know, I, I didn't get that far. I just turned her down, and, and now it's... You feel responsible for what happened? Yes, to a point. I mean, if I would have helped her, you know, maybe none of this would have happened. Then that's why you called me by her name when we were making love. You'd just seen her. I am sorry, Fancy. But why didn't you tell me all this then? Why try to keep it from me? I, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it was stupid. I, I, I just wasn't ready to talk about it with anyone. Even me? <sighs> what else aren't you telling me about you and Maya? Who said there was anything else? No, I'm not stupid, Noah. Something big happened between the two of you. For the last time, tell me what it is. Look, like I said, I, I met Maya in college, and she'd been going out with this guy who treated her like dirt. I mean, he even hit her. And she took it? Why would she accept that kind of treatment? No, she, she didn't, all right? I mean, I was in the park, and I, I, and I saw him attacking her, and I knew I had to help. Uh, Noah, Maya's asking for you. I'll be right back. Okay. I'll be here. What on earth happened between those two? And why did she come here to ask Noah for help? Her bee is trapped in a body that can't respond so that he can hear every single solitary word that is said about him. I'm uncomfortable, Rachel. This is too eerie for me. And besides, I really do have to go. Where? Uh, I need to see Martin. I still don't know how he feels. About him leaving Pilar for you? Yes, and, and, and I'm not going behind Pilar's back. She knows exactly where I stand. What did she say? <sighs> you mean after she tried to hit me? Rachel, she loves Martin, too. You know, this is really about how Martin feels. This can't be easy for him. No. No, and if I could, I would just stand back and watch them renew their wedding vows, but I can't. I just can't do it. You don't have to justify your actions to me, Catherine. You deserve to be happy. You're a pathetic excuse for a woman. You deserve everything I did to you. Still nothing that even looks like a deep, dark secret of Alistair's. I can find anything either. Dios, I'm gonna get fired if I don't go back upstairs. I've been gone forever. You're giving up too? Yeah, only for now. I want to come back down after closing, take another look. <sighs> Simone. I could get in a lot of trouble for doing this. It would be worth it if we could find something incriminating about Alistair, wouldn't it? Yeah, I surely would. That man has caused my family so much pain and heartache over the years. There's nothing I would like better than to pay him back. Yeah, your family and mine both. Look, any trouble that we can get into over this would be worth it. Mm, you make me so happy, Martin. That's good. I'm glad. You know, renewing our vows isn't just for us anyway. I, I like to think of it as a symbol of how strong our family is. We are strong, aren't we? Yeah. Hoping it will bring us all closer together. Well, you know, maybe Miguel. Oh, will even God, make it. that would be something, huh? Yeah. If one of our sons could come and be Papa? a part of all of this. Mama? Oh, there you are, Mia. Hey, hi, sweetheart. Hey, the, uh, the girl said you guys were downstairs. 
Uh, si, sí, si, sí, um, Simone was helping me with, um, some, um, inventory. Hey, you look beautiful, Mrs. Lopez Fitzgerald. Oh, thank you. Oh, wow. I, uh, <laughs> thank you. I went to, uh, the spa with Teresa this evening. No. I thought it had something to do with our upcoming vow renewal. Oh, that too. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Paloma. I know that you love Catherine. I do. She was like a mother to me, Mama. You're safe. Look, I want you to know that, um, despite my feelings towards Catherine, I will always be grateful to her for helping my sister and your father raise you into such a beautiful young woman. Well, I just hope that your feelings for Catherine don't interfere with you being part of the ceremony when we renew our vows. not gonna take Jane away from me. Gwen, I know it's gonna hurt. Almost as much as it hurt when you took her away from me and little Lisa. Yeah, because you're an unfit mother, Teresa. And by the way, you can forget about us going home with you tonight. Are you crazy? Well, since you obviously can't be rational, I'm sure Ethan can. <laughs> Teresa, I'm with Gwen all the way on this. We're not returning to the mansion. What is wrong with you? I mean, I'm about to offer you the deal of a lifetime here. Don't you even want to hear it? Uh, honestly, no, I don't want to hear it. Alistair has just put me in charge of Crane Industries, Ethan. You know I can't possibly run it by myself. I'm going to need your help. As if he's going to work with you for one day. Are you? We're going to India to get away from you, Teresa. Yes, you're moving to India so that Ethan could work out of our facility there. However, unfortunately for you, that job offer is no longer available. You are such a bitch, you know that? Excuse me, why don't you let your husband speak for himself? Let him decide whether or not he wants to accept my more than generous job offer to help me here in the main office in Harmony. Or don't you trust what he'll say? When? So think about it, Ethan. You've invested so much in Crane Industries. You know it's working inside and out. Surely you're not going to throw it away for no good reason. Teresa, I am a damn fine attorney, and I can land a good job anywhere in this world. I know that. All I'm asking is that you give my job offer some real thought before you turn it down flat to please your wife. I mean, I would think that you would hate to be responsible for the downfall of an entire corporation that you have poured so much of your blood and sweat and tears into. <laughs> right, you really want Ethan by your side for, for business reasons, is Teresa, that it? <laughs> Teresa, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a hand. And if Ethan wants to stay put, so be it. If he doesn't, no one is going to force him, correct? Mm -hmm. That's correct. You're absolutely right. Let's not argue about this anymore tonight. Let's head home. Let's have a bite to eat and have a, a healthy drink, shall we? I'd rather eat poison, but thanks, though. Suit yourself. But this jet, it's not going anywhere. So, Gwen, tell me, what are your plans? You gonna sleep on the runway tonight? past relationship that he hasn't been able to tell me. Dr. Russell said you wanted to see me. I needed to tell you. I'm so sorry I came to Harmony. I never should have bothered you. Hey, hey, look, don't be like that, okay? That's ridiculous. I'm the one who feels lousy. All right, you came to me for help and I turned you down. I understand. No, look, maybe if I had helped you, you know, none of this would have happened. You wouldn't be lying here like this. I, I will make it up to you, Maya. I promise. It's too dangerous, especially for you. Why me? You know. Wait, does this beating have to do with... Yes, I'm sure of it. God. Oh, God. I let my guard down after so much time had passed. Just forget you ever saw me again, Noah. Stay out of it. Maya, I can't do that. You have no choice. What happened tonight was just a warning. Who knows what these people will do next? 
You have to forget about me and take care of your new life and your new girlfriend. Maya, you are asking me to do something that you know I can't do. You've got to. And whatever you do, don't tell her anything. I'm sorry, Maya, but I have to tell Fancy the truth, okay? She's been patient about you and me long enough. She deserves an explanation. I'm going to tell her the truth about us. No, you can't. Whatever you do, don't tell her. She looks so upset. What on earth are they saying? Jane is still asleep, thank God. It's cold outside. I mean, surely you're not gonna let foolish pride subject Jane to the elements. <sighs> Teresa, we're gonna find a hotel. And pay for it how? With our credit card, Teresa. Oh. You can hand that over to me. You're way out of bounds on this one. Am I, Ethan? Julian? I'm not very savvy at this whole business thing, you know? I didn't graduate with an MBA from an Ivy League school. Well, so if, if you were in my shoes, if you were acting CEO of one of the largest companies in the world, would you let a disgruntled employee continue to use his company credit card? Teresa, you're playing games. I'm looking after the interests of the enterprise that I've been charged with safeguarding, Julia. I have an obligation to our stockholders. You can hand that card over to me now. Honey, go ahead and make her day. We have other cards anyway. Actually, um, they're all issued by Crane Becks. She controls them now. Okay, well, I have money. Hey, I have my trust fund. Oh, which Alistair told me are also all in Cranon Banks. I am so sorry. It looks like you guys are flat broke until I decide to release your funds. But you can fix all this by simply coming to work for me at Crane, Ethan. Surely you want to provide for your family. Fine. <sighs> Take it. Thank you, Ethan. I'll just need this one. As those others, they won't work anyway. Wow, Alistair really knew what he was doing when he named her successor. She's just as cold-hearted and vicious as he ever was. No, do prattle on, Rachel. It gets boring lying here in silence with everyone thinking I'm no brighter than a rutabaga. I do hope you're suffering, Alistair. In fact, I hope everything about you is dead except that devious mind. I can't imagine a worse fate than being locked up inside a body that can't move. <laughs> a cry for relief. It's not so bad, Rachel. I'm still causing grief to my betrayers, and I don't have to lift a finger to do it. Oh, I'd love to be a fly on the wall in the video codicil to my last will and testament as viewed by the interested parties. I can only imagine the chaos sure to ensue. <laughs> I didn't know better. I think he was like that. <laughs> You're going to support your father and me? You know, it's important to both of us that you be there, sweetheart. Yes, I'll come. But I cannot lie to you, Mama. I still love Catherine. And I know she hurt you, but she was never anything but wonderful to me. Well, I wouldn't expect you to feel any other way. I just hope, Menina, that you finally understand why I sent you away to me. We were poor, and I, I just wanted you to have the best Mama, things in life. Mama, we've been through all this. I love Papa, and I, and I love you, too. I love you, too, Palmita. Very much. OK, we love each other, but I'm going to get fired <laughs> if, if I don't get back to work. <laughs> of course. 
Yes. But, but um, if you like, we can talk while I work. I'd like that very much. In fact, there's a magazine that's got ideas about, you know, renewing your vows. I want to show it to you. Okay, come on. Well, what about me? This is Girl Talk Papi. Go, drink your coffee. Go. No, no girl talk for me. <laughs> okay. Catherine. Yes, hello, Martin. Have you had the chance to think about what I said? You know, why don't we talk outside? Fancy deserves the truth, and frankly, I think she has a right to hear it. Well, if you won't keep our secret for my sake, keep it for all of our sakes. What happened tonight, me being beaten up and left for dead, it's all connected to that night in the attic. Maya, are you sure? If that woman hadn't come along when she did and screamed for help, those men might have finished the job. They mean business, Noah. Do you want those same horrible people to come after Fancy, too? Honey, I only have a few dollars. We're not going to be able to get a hotel room without a credit card. Don't worry, I have some cash. You know what? Thank you. We'll, we'll be fine. We're fine. Sheridan is gone. She's in Hawaii with Chris looking for Beth and Marty. I'm sure she won't mind if we use her room while she's away at the B&B. OK, that is such a good idea. That'll be just fine. Surely you would rather Jane stay somewhere familiar where she will be comfortable. Frankly, Teresa, Jane would be more comfortable in a shack with us than one more night under the same roof with you. How dare you, Gwen? Please. All right, L listen, I've had enough for one night. Come on. Didn't quite go the way you'd hope, did it? Shut up, Julian. You know, Teresa, I don't take orders from you either, and I must say, I believe you're making a colossal mistake. You know, if I wanted your opinion, I would have asked for it. I'm not making a mistake. Ethan may not be in the same house with me yet, but he's still in harmony. And it won't be long before he's back with me, where he belongs. Catherine, I thought that we agreed that we'd stay away from each other. <gasps> that was before, when Alistair was threatening to tell Sheridan that, that she'd killed Rachel. And you and I, we did everything we needed to do to protect her. But we all know that Rachel's alive. Everything has changed. And for the first time, we're really free to be together. I love you, Martin. Oh, my God. You don't love me. That's not the question here, Catherine. Of course I love you. But you love Pilar, too. I never stopped. I know. I know you've always cared deeply for her and that it was a <sighs> terrible agony for you to leave her. I never dreamed that you and I would fall in love. But we did. And nothing can change that. I'm not going to stand here and try and pressure you into something you don't want to do. What do you call this? I call this presenting you with a choice. You could call off this vow renewal ceremony. We spent years together, happy, in love. You don't just throw that away when we finally have a chance, a second chance to be together. Do you think the same creeps who attacked you would go after Fancy? There's not a doubt in my mind, Noah. If you want to protect Fancy, don't tell her anything about us. Especially that night. This isn't fair. That's not the way these people think. They'll hurt anyone who knows anything about that night. Don't you 
see, this is so much bigger than the two of us. You and I kept quiet for years. We even went our separate ways. Yeah, but I, I always thought you were safe. I always hoped the same for you. That's why it was wrong for me to come back here and contact you. Now that they know we're in terrible danger, anyone we talk to is going to be in danger too. But I owe Fancy the truth. Doesn't protecting her come before that? If you love her as much as you say you do, you won't put her at that risk. You'd hate yourself if anything ever happened to her. Yeah, I couldn't bear it. Then promise me that you won't tell her anything. <coughs> no, no, that's it. You have to leave. Maya needs to rest. All right, I'm going. No, promise me, Noah. You have to promise me. Maya. Please, no, yes, I want you to stop talking and just rest. Please, Noah. Um, what's going on? Why did Maya need to talk to you? Um, it, it was about uh, our past. Oh, that's funny. The same thing I want to talk to you about. Only she knows what it is and I don't. Are you ready to tell me everything now, Noah? I'm sorry, Fancy. I can't tell you anything. A minute ago, you were about to tell me everything. Then she called you inside. What did she say that changed your mind? I can't go into it. Okay. Oh, God. Not again, Noah. I was serious when I said I'd leave you if you couldn't be honest with me about this. How could you go back on your word? Fancy, look, I wish I could tell you, all right? But I can't. I'm sorry. You, look, you're just going to have to trust me on this one, okay? No. Trust you? It works both ways, you know. If you can't trust me enough to be honest with me, then I'm sorry. I can't trust you either. You have no idea how disappointed I am in you right now. I'm sorry. So am I. You said I was the most important woman in your life, but your actions say something very different. You lied to me, Noah. Fancy, no. Come back here. I can't stay out here with you. Martin, I'll let you go in a minute. Promise me that you'll take some time and think about this. I don't know what to say. Tell me that you feel as I do. That life is too short to settle for less than your dream. Oh my God, Martin, we were gloriously happy. For all of those years, we could be happy again. There's absolutely nothing standing in our way now. We're not the only ones who were dealt a lousy hand. Pilar deserves to be happy too. Of course she does, but not at our expense. My God, Martin, you were away all those years. She could have moved on with her life, found another man, started a new life. Yeah, you know why she couldn't. I mean, she didn't even know what had happened to me. But now she does. And she knows that you've moved on to find joy and contentment with another person. Can't you give her the same chance? She doesn't want that. I see. Well, call me selfish, because maybe that's what I am. But I don't want to spend another day without you, Martin. I am so happy that you're going to be part of the ceremony. I just want everyone to be happy. For me, that includes Catherine. Well, now that Alice is in a coma and he can't control Catherine, she can move on. She can find somebody else to be happy with in her life, other than my husband. Okay. Honey, were you able to reach Sheridan in Hawaii? Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah, she said we could stay here as long as we wanted. Guess India's out of the question. Look, don't worry about it. I will find something else. In the meantime, hey, we got a roof over our heads, right? You know, I knew this was too good to be true. As long as Teresa is breathing, she's gonna find a way to insinuate her way into our life. Not forever. Not forever, I promise you. I love you. And I love that little girl. And I'm gonna move heaven and earth to prove it to you. And Teresa's just gonna have to accept it. I love you. I love you very much. Mm. Don't worry about it. It'll be okay. Sweetheart, where's the nanny? In the pantry. Okay. So, what's that that you're hiding, huh? It's a surprise. You can't look. Okay. I won't. You know, it's getting late, so, uh, time for you to hit the hay. You know what I mean? Come with me. Okay. I will, I will. But in the meantime, can you do me a favor? Brush your teeth and wash your face, okay? And I'll be right there to tuck you in. Daddy, that you deserve. Thanks to Alistair, I know that fate will come through for me. And we will be a family with Jane and Ethan. I will make that happen. I promise. my life and you tried to pin it on Teresa you want to explain that to me Otto Krauss must know that we're here 